This is the new Peugeot 208 electric hatchback. Many countries won't be ordering the internal combustion engine version. They're going to go EV only. Australia is one of those countries, but there are different variants of this car. I'll talk about the EV version for the sake of this video. So if you're interested in the petrol or the, or the hybrid versions, this is not the right video for you. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. You're probably thinking it looks like a car you've already seen before because it is. This is the refreshed mid-cycle update of the existing, very well-selling, it's a good-selling vehicle in Europe, Peugeot E208 electric hatchback. It sells well because it looks good and it's fairly well-priced in Europe. I mean, not groundbreakingly priced, but pretty good. The Peugeot E208 was first revealed in 2019. Unfortunately, that was when we first discovered the fact that it is built on a platform which is intended for all different kinds of cars. There is a hybrid version, like I said before, there's a gasoline powered version. There's yeah, a mild hybrid version. So there's basically four different versions of this car. That's the reason why it's not a ground up electric car. It's therefore a bit heavier than what I think it should be or could be. And it's probably also the reason why it's fairly expensive. How much is it? Well, before we get to that, what are the actual details? First of all, yes, it's coming to Australia, America. I don't think you guys are going to get it. Europe, yes, all across, all around Europe. The UK, yes. Canada, um, don't think so. What battery pack does it have? It's not a lithium iron phosphate pack. It's an NCM chemistry battery pack, so lithium iron chemistry battery pack. And it has a size of 51 kilowatt hours. That gives it a range on the WLTP cycle of 250 miles or 400 kilometers, meaning it's got a bit more range than three of its tough competition in base model form in Australia. But if you go to the mid-spec form of those cars, then basically it's got a bit less range. So what am I talking about there? Well, there's three different electric cars on sale in Australia now in a number of different countries that undercut this car on price and they're bigger. The MG4, that's on sale in Europe. The BYD Dolphin, that's just about to go on sale in Europe. The Great Wall Motors Aura, that is about to go on sale in Europe as well. And all of them will be cheaper than this. They're not maybe as good looking as this car is. In fact, definitely not in my opinion. But the question is, do you prefer style or substance? Now, what do I mean by substance? Well, what I mean is this. The price of this car is around 60000 Australian dollars. That's around about 42,000, 41,000 US dollars. It's not cheap. And considering the range, it's not bad. It's 400 kilometers of range, like I said, 248 miles. For the money you're paying, there's definitely better options. That said, if you love the look of this car, go right ahead. It's actually pretty cool. Charging speed is 100 kilowatt with a DC fast charger, and it can charge from 20 to 80% in less than 25 minutes, says Peugeot. Apparently, you can actually pay a little bit more and option 11 kilowatt charging speed. But of course, you need three phase power to get 11 kilowatt charging speed at home. And now, as you can see, it does look refreshed on the inside and the out. The inside, in my opinion, looks okay. I don't think it looks amazing. Some Peugeots look really, really cool on the inside. I don't believe this is one of them. The outside, though, is very cute, very sexy little car. But that's what I think. Let me know if you agree or you disagree in the comments. What about infotainment? It comes with two digital screens, one for the driver and one, of course, for the middle of the dashboard. They're both 10 inches in size. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. And apparently the infotainment system can receive software updates over the air. All manufacturers say that, but they don't usually actually deliver on their promises when it comes to over the air updates. What about safety? It is actually a pretty safe car. It's almost guaranteed to get a five-star safety rating. It's got autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, driver attention alert, road sign recognition, and a few other features as well. Three variants, Active, Allure, and GT. Pricing, like I said, is believed to start at around 60,000 Australian dollars, so around about 40,000 US dollars, meaning it's, well, quite a bit more expensive than those models that I mentioned before, the BBD Dolphin, the MG4, and the Great Wall Motors Aura. Now, if you step up in those models to the mid-spec range, you're looking at about $45,000. You're looking at a little bit more range in this car in a bigger car. 
I think it'll be a tough sell. Now, why is it so expensive? Or why is it more expensive than its rivals? Well, here's the thing. Stellantis doesn't make this car in China. It's made in Europe. And Stellantis says that it costs them twice the price to make an EV versus to make an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, of course, we know that in China, EVs are priced at about the same price as a gasoline petrol powered car. Plus, those three vehicles I just mentioned are all ground up EVs. The Peugeot E208 is not. Cost bill, and generally it does cost a bit more money to build an electric car when it's sort of a conversion car, which is what this pretty much is. So that's the reason. So does that mean you should or you shouldn't buy it? Well, it really depends. If you're falling in love with this, there's definitely worse cars you could get. But of course, there's also better options on the market. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching.